What are we supposed to do when our kids aren't getting along? If you're anything like me, you might feel frustrated, powerless, or you might feel like a total failure. You might have a friend or family member who seems to have kids that just never fight. Like, what is that about? <laughs> you might wonder what's wrong with you or feel like you're the only one who has fighting kids. It is really easy to feel like our kids not getting along must be a reflection of what a bad mom that we are. Clearly, we're not doing something right or they wouldn't be fighting. So I have had all of those thoughts and I'm here to assure you that you are not alone. We all have kids who fight sometimes. Some kids' temperaments clash more than others and some kids just come into this world with stronger personalities or stronger lungs, but every family has their conflicts. So last year, my little family was going through a really hard time and my kids were struggling. They were ages two, five, and eight and truly I felt like all they ever did was fight. For a time, I felt like it was worthless for me to even want them to get along. I felt like nothing I was doing was making any difference. But I'm here to give you some encouragement to keep trying. It was not pointless. And now I hardly ever have the problems that we used to have. So today we're simplifying the process into four steps that will help you regain control and calm and confidence when your kids aren't getting along. First, determine your values and rules. Deciding ahead of time what you will and won't allow in your home is really the foundational piece to dealing with kids who aren't getting along. Every family has different rules and different values, so really dig deep and Figure out what feels good to you. Remember, there are no shoulds. I will link that video. But for the sake of everyone, I do recommend that you keep it simple. I pretty much have two rules. First of all, I have a very strict no physical aggression policy in my house. If anyone pushes, hits, kicks, bites, scratches, pinches, anything like that, I get involved and they will have a consequence. The other thing that I really value is kindness. So the rule in my house is that we don't say any unkind things or talk in an unkind way to each other. If anyone says something rude or isn't talking nice, they are going to be hearing from me right away. Next is to decide the consequence. Just like the rules, the consequence will be specific to you and specific to your kids. You may need to experiment with different strategies and it may even need to be different for every child. These are mine, just in case you're curious. So before or right after some physical aggression goes down, I will go to the child and gently direct them away from hitting, right, or kicking. So if I need to, I'll gently grab their arm or their leg and I'll just say, I can't let you hit. Go into that room and calm down. I'll set the timer for five minutes and then I'll come talk to you when it rings. The time is different depending on which child. Obviously, they're different ages, but the room that they're sent to is always going to be not their bedroom or not the playroom that has all of their toys and favorite things but it should have something to keep them busy with if they want to. So maybe they're sent to their little brother's room, right? That doesn't have their awesome Legos, but it does have a train or something. So I will pause or reset the timer if they come out of that room. And once it rings, I'll go in there and say, um, I go in there with the frame of mind seeking understanding. So I'll say something like, I know you know better than to hit, what happened? And I'm totally there curious to hear out their story and to kind of talk about what happened. So the kindness thing is something that I still correct to this day, I would say at least once a day between my three kids. Sometimes a lot more, it just depends on the day. What I do is the second I hear something that I don't want to be hearing, I just say, talk with kindness and that's it. <laughs> I have been such a broken record with this for the past at least two years, I would say. And by now that verbal reminder is really enough most of the time to have my kids course correct on their own. But if they don't right away, then I get more involved 
by at, at that point. So in worst case, I'll go to the kid who's struggling to be kind and walk them away from the situation to have just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. My goal in doing that is to not subject the other kids to being talked to that way and to send a very clear message to everyone, quite frankly, that I won't allow them to talk to each other that way. So we wanna decide on the rules and the consequences ahead of time. That happens separately, you're outside of the situation, you know, maybe one evening once the kids are in bed or something, you just sit and think and decide on those two things. Then we're ready for showtime, right? <laughs> so these next two things are things that we are gonna do in the moment. So we're in the moment, our kids aren't getting along, and now our task is to keep our cool. Parenting 101 is to always keep your emotions in check. It will 100% make any situation worse if we are angry or feeling out of control. I have a video from way back when about avoiding blowing up at your kids. I will link that video if you're curious because I honestly still really love that approach, but it's not really gonna help us in these moments when we need to intervene right away. So we need to be able to keep our cool in that moment before we have the luxury of taking a few minutes for ourselves, right? So what we need to do is keep our brain from getting hijacked. Our brain automatically switches to fight or flight mode when it thinks that there's danger around. And more often than not, that's where it goes when our kids are fighting. So if one hits the other and your brain is telling you that survival is on the line, we just need to talk it off the ledge and be pretty quick about it so that we can make a good decision and show up in the way we want to for our kid. So to do this, I recommend finding a phrase that can bring some amount of calm in that moment. The phrase I have been using lately is, it's normal. It's normal for kids to push boundaries. It's normal for siblings to disagree. It's normal for kids to need to be reminded of the rules. It's normal for family members to need some space from each other sometimes. It's normal for siblings to fight. Now, just because it's normal doesn't mean it's acceptable, which is why I have my two rules and my two consequences. But telling myself this really keeps my brain and my emotions in check. Some other phrases that might be helpful to you is, um, this isn't an emergency. Everyone is just fine. We're all gonna be okay. <laughs> I can handle this. I can handle anything. No one is bleeding. <laughs> everyone is alive just experiment get really curious with yourself about what your brain needs kind of reassurance basically in order to feel okay in these moments and to just normalize the situation find what works for you to just kind of get past that knee-jerk reaction when your kids start fighting you want to stay in your higher brain so that you can think your best and make good decisions and certainly to avoid doing or saying something that you might regret. So we're on to our last thing. We have our rules, we have our consequences, we're keeping our cool in the moment. And so the final piece is to decide your role. We now wanna use that higher brain to make a good decision. So we have the choice to intervene or not to intervene. I really think that as a parent, our natural tendency, or at least most of our natural tendencies, is to intervene. We want the fighting to go away. We want everyone to be quiet and love each other. <laughs> we know that we could solve the problem for everybody if we just got involved. So that's usually probably what we want to do. But what I want to offer you is that a lot of the times, it's in everyone's best interest to actually allow your kids to experience conflict allow them to problem solve, to negotiate, to get frustrated, basically just allow them to live life and have those experiences. Especially if you are feeling exhausted right now as the parent, I give you permission to make your decision as simple as this. If anyone breaks the rules, I intervene. And that's it. If anyone breaks the rules, I intervene, which means you're not intervening any other times. So I am a total believer of taking preventative measures, meaning like you really get to know your child, you can tell 
when they are losing it and about to break the rules and then you step in. But for now, let's just lessen your mental load and get some momentum here. I highly recommend just simplifying it for your own sake. Free up some of that mental energy and instead of feeling the need to micromanage all the time and to you know prevent things from happening and keep everyone happy all of the time, let's just decide to save our involvement for the times that really count. Your 100% consistency with rules and consequences will really speak volumes and get everyone on the right track. So I would highly recommend that as your starting point. And that's the checklist. It really doesn't have to be that complicated. As you intentionally define rules and consequences and follow through every single time, not only will you be earning the trust of your kids, but you'll also be earning trust with yourself. You will gain confidence as you do what you said you're gonna do every single time and your kids will definitely pick up on that. Expect it to get worse before it gets better. That's just always really how parenting works. But as you stay the course and you keep showing up day after day after day, you will start noticing positive changes. You'll feel more in control. You'll be in integrity with yourself and your choices and your actions. And you'll be bringing a feeling of calm to yourself no matter what's going on around you. I hope you have a great day and really do know that you are amazing. I will see you later.